Black WNST, Towson Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. This is going to be one of the all-time great segments I've ever done here at WNST.net uh, because I'm going to eat ice cream. And if anybody knows anything about me, if you followed my journey, if you follow my Facebook or Twitter, this spoon eats a lot of ice cream. And I'm going to allow this guy to come in here and tell the story because I got an email last week uh, during the time when we were talking to tons of university folks. This week it's all mayor candidates. Last week it was university folks. Somewhere between Freeman Rabowski uh, and, and Dr. David Wilson, I, I wound up getting an email uh, from Stephen Butts. Rhymes with Utz, which is local enough. He is a, a business operator, founder, father, circumnavigator, so it says on his LinkedIn. He's also the CEO, and I'm going to reach into my little bag of tricks here. I don't know which one I'm going to come out with. This is my favorite because it's the light one. It's the one I've already eaten the most of, the <laughs> Honey Graham ice cream. Steve, get in here, man. What's going on? How are you? How are you, Nestor? Good to, good to finally speak with you. Well, I, I, you know, it's the weirdest thing is, like, you listen to WNST. You're, you're the one guy that, uh, that listens to <laughs> WNST. Uh, and, and you told me that you heard me give a shout-out, which I did give a shout-out last week. Uh, you do have a location in the new Cross Street Market. Uh, Arsh uh, Merman's a, a friend of mine, and, you know, all those places that are Alex Smith's opening a place. My Royal Farms, my dear friends have fried chicken. You know, you can get fried chicken and Taharka together at Cross Street. But uh, I have been sampling the Honey Graham, um, I don't know, maybe 15 years it feels like. Like I, I remember the first time I ever had it. It was at uh, the club level at the stadium, the football stadium. I was there for Big Brothers, Big Sisters cooking thing. My wife and I made Venezuelan mojo tacos and pork, and you guys were sampling this Honey Graham. And the first time I ever had salted Caramel ice cream was Taharka, and I really, I can't honestly say that I've ever had another Honey Graham, but once I tasted this, I was always sort of on the lookout for it, and I was at a market two and a half weeks ago, uh, Charles Street, and uh, I guess it's Saratoga, no, it's more further, Fayette, further north, I don't know, uh, Cathedral, I don't know. It's, it's, I think it's Saratoga. And it's Saratoga, it's, I was right, all right. It's uh, Street Market. Street street market, streets yeah. market, and they have a ton of awesome Asian stuff there, a ton of awesome uh, Middle Eastern stuff and European stuff, but they had in their cooler Taharka Honey Graham, and I forked over the five or six bucks, and I came back, and I awakened more than my taste buds, and I gave you guys a shout out, and I like, I put a picture up of me eating local ice cream, and I'll be honest, I, I mean, nobody's more local than me, right? Pizza John's and Liberty Pure right up the road, uh, Royal Farms, Planet Fitness is all local. Even my Roos Chris friends are all local owners, right? And you reach to me and say, hey, I run to Harka, thanks for eating our ice cream. And I said, dude, I got to put you on the air and hear how this pint of ice cream got from... <laughs> you to there to here to the internet to find a guy who's the CEO of Taharka who actually listens to my show. So I'm yeah, going to sit here and eat Honey Graham ice cream, and, and I want to hear the story, man. That's right. And I live in Baltimore, and I care a lot about the city. Uh, I guess that's really where it started. Uh, Nestor is, you know, last fall um, I started uh, listening again. Um, I had been a longtime listener to 1570 and last fall. Got into it a little bit more after getting back from uh, sailing and, and a uh, business I'm running down in Ocean City. And hey, it's just uh, really... a I can't talk to you with my mouth full. I got a question. <laughs> you no, you were sa sailing the world, is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just uh, finished a circumnavigation uh, around this time last year. Um, took uh, my family, my kids out of school for a year. And um, they did the South Pacific uh, leg with me. That's, uh, you know, all the way from the uh, French Polynesia. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Uh, I, I, hold, hold on. I've been to Morea. I've been to Bora Bora. Sure. I've been to Tahiti and, and uh, Papiete. That's the most beautiful place in the world. So you had a boat there? Absolutely. Did Absolutely. you have ice cream? More importantly, did, did, did you have Poisson Cru? That's the most rare, important thing. Rare, rarely, rarely ice cream. Uh, it was available in some places, but rarely. Man, I hope That's you got true. some good macadamia nut or something out that way, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Pineapple. Loved French Polynesia. Loved uh, the Cook Islands there. And, uh, you know, particularly enjoyed New Zealand, Fiji. Um, we anyway. love the South Island. You make it to the South Island? 
Um, which the South Island? Oh, yeah, of course, New Zealand. New yes. Zealand, yeah, yes, absolutely. What Queenstown? One of my favorite spots in the world. Queenstown's the most beautiful city in the world. I, I put a video up. My wife and I chased Springsteen over there uh, two and a half years ago, right after my wife survived the second time, and we did Springsteen in Australia, and New Zealand. We saw Springsteen in Christchurch. It was right after the the earthquake there. I mean, you, the devastation was unlike anything we've ever seen in an urban environment. That's and right. then we went down to Queenstown and we sailed uh, Doubtful Sound, uh, the southernmost sound you, uh, inland sure. sound in the world. And, uh, man, we saw four seasons that day. It snowed, it rained, we saw penguins, we saw dolphins. It was crazy. <laughs> it was like being in like this. By the way, I got pistachio here, okay? This is yep. my wife's favorite flavor before we get back to New Zealand, brag on the pistachio because I know that you want to do that because yours is like a little different than like other pistachio. Yeah, well, I think one, it's not green, so that, <laughs> there's that, but it's uh, it's got a ton of, of pistachios in it. It's it's uh, it's a really it's good nice. blend and uh, mix in. And to be honest, I've never uh, had it by the way. It's it's this is a brand new pint, so I'm going to eat all the ice cream in the place. beginning, and then I'm going to send because my wife will be really pissed if this if this melts. Because we're going to be talking for a while, you and me. So, anyway, pistachio. Go back to pistachio. No, I love the pistachio. I mean, you're right about Honeygram. You, you mentioned that earlier. The Honeygram, uh, you know, is our bestseller. Uh, it's what people continuously uh, call me about. It's your signature uh, flavor. Is that what you would say? Yeah, it's our signature flavor. Um, although, we have another one called Mint Flicks and Chills. We do a homemade peppermint patty in that. And uh, it's becoming every bit uh, as popular as Honey Graham. Well, you know how popular it was? Uh, I couldn't find it yesterday. <laughs> that's right. That's uh, right. Pist- oh, pistachio is nice. I got yeah, like a little, actually, like a little we, cherry we are, kickback to it. You know, with the um, with the pandemic, we're actually we are having trouble keeping product on the shelves right now. So I've been communicating with our retailer. You need to restock you know, they- Eddie's, by the way, up on Eager. I went there. All they have was the vanilla and the strawberry. Just, we you know. just got there. We just got their order yesterday. It should be going out today. <laughs> See that? I mean, I, I'm I'm do I'm restocking for you in downtown Baltimore. Now that you and I are friends, I'm gonna have to figure out where I can get your ice cream. You know. That's right. And part of this problem was brought on. We brought it on ourselves with the. Uh, we pivoted to home delivery. Uh, we just started that March 15th, the day before or the day of uh, Larry Hogan's announcement, the governor's announcement, shutting down. Um, you know, all non-essential businesses and. And essentially, uh, we, we at this point we've done about thirty five hundred home deliveries to date. Uh, so it's been will be thirty five hundred and one if it starts to melt here. Okay, so I, <laughs> that's right. By the way, I got another flavor here. Steve Butts is with me. He's from Taharka. We're talking about sailing around the world. And and once I get the ice cream out of here, because I'm going to sample all these. I just had a pistachio. I did manage to find the last wake and bake. At the uh, at the streets market, so tell everybody about wake and bake here because I'm I'm about to open it, I'm about to eat it, and uh, again I'm going to give all this back to my wife so I can eat this later on tonight, and I'll I'll take pictures later uh, when my hair's well, you, done. Did you know it's interesting because I, I didn't actually uh, know this about wake and bake until a couple days ago. Uh, we were writing up some product descriptions, and uh, the founder uh, here, his name's Sean Smeaton. Um, you know, he was talking about the origins of some of the flavors. Now, I think I've met Sean before. Like, Sean has probably sampled me some Taharka in some of these events, correct? Um, I'm sure he has, and you've probably met some of the other guys. The, uh, there's, a, there's a core group of guys here at Taharka, a really great group. They've come up with the, uh, with the business. Um, you got Vince, Dietrich, Kofi. These guys have been here eight, nine, ten years. Um, you know, have been really pushing this thing uh, forward. So all the credit in terms of the quality of the product and, um, you know, everything about the brand, the brand recognition goes to that core group of guys who, who eventually are going to um, own this company. Um, so we're, we're in the middle of a transition. Yeah, I want to hear the whole story, man, because, I mean, I've heard it to Harker for 15, 20 years. I've been eating it. I, I just don't find that they have it over next to Phillips. Like when my wife and I walk through the city, we're not usually like in the mood for ice cream. We're walking through the city. We usually like, quite frankly, you know, have a beer, have water. My wife likes walking fast. We're always like walking to Patterson Park or something. We're not the ones that just stroll through the city and get ice cream cones much, you know. But yeah. but when yeah. we do, you know, I mean, I have had your salted caramel on several occasions next to Phillips. It's good stuff. Very good stuff. So Ooh, that's good. What is it? that's coffee? What's in that? Yeah. yeah. 
So the wake so anyway, the wake and bake flavor. I mean, the interesting thing there, and I just learned this, is that that the the intention was that for that to become a a, a CBD. Uh, infused flavor. Well, it's a little uh, early but, in the morning. I mean, come on now. I mean, I'm having <laughs> coffee with ice cream. You have to wait till at least five o'clock for that. Let me get done right. work. You know, that's right. I, and and I think the, the thanks, the Curio. Rules Good and, to see you. The rules and 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 uh, regs around that it will prove to be a little bit insurmountable at this time. Um, but anyway, that was the origin there. The wake and bake was uh, was intended to be a CBD infused flavor. Obviously, it has none in it. Just uh, great chocolate sauce fudge. And uh, chocolate ice cream. All right, I got my last flavor. I bought I bought three yesterday. This is the weird one. Like my what my my father's favorite flavor in the world was strawberry. Right. My dad always had strawberry ice cream in the house. My dad was like a cheapskate. Right. It was always like off brand Pantry Pride, Neapolitan. You know what I mean? Yeah. The ninety nine yep. cents for the core. You know. So you know that's the kind of ice cream I grew up on. I discovered Ben and Jerry's. In 1989, I fell in love with a girl uh, in Buffalo, New York on New Year's Eve. It's Mike Rosigliano's fault. And she lived in Granville, New York, which is on the border uh, near Glens Falls. I'm growing my Barry Melrose uh, Adirondack Red Wings hair right now. Um, And we went into Vermont, Rutland, Vermont. And she knew, like, you know, some people involved. And we got, like, some free gift cards. This is, like, when nobody knew what Ben & Jerry's was 32 years, 31 years ago. And it was then I discovered premium ice cream, Steve, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and um, no offense to what my dad ate, and, and my dad ate a lot of strawberry ice cream. I'm assuming it's not, it was not roasted strawberry like what you guys do here, and I'm about to have for the first time. But there was something about Chunky Monkey and Cherry Garcia that never, ever allowed me to go back to a fluffy, whipped, light... Yep. Um, flavorless or milk ice or any of that, and I, you know, it's just like once you've had good wine, you can't drink cheap wine. It's just kind of where it is. So, um, for you with Taharka, you you obviously were a a customer, right? I mean, you you ate it before you you became the CEO, right? <laughs> I did, I did, I did not realize the uh, the incredible situation I was walking into. To be to be completely honest, I've known Sean for over twenty years. And I got into this from the uh, from the charitable side. From frankly, from it started as a nonprofit, uh, Sylvan Beach Foundation, uh, over twenty five years ago. Wow! And that, that's how I met. Were the Sean. Taharka brothers like real people? Uh, yes, absolutely. So there's uh, Taharka McCoy uh, is the namesake of the uh, of the of the company, and um, it's a pretty. Cool story and a sad story, Nestor, and it's a frankly, it's a Baltimore story. Oh um, well, how, how about this? Is, is roasted strawberry the right flavor for this story? <laughs> no, probably not. Oh, <laughs> probably. oh okay. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can stick with the roasted strawberry. Well, I've never had that's roasted good. strawberry, so I'm about to dig into this. So before I get to a happy, a sad try. Baltimore story, try. and then I'm going to give the ice cream back uh, at least. I may keep the honey graham out here and finish it because, you know, it's going to melt because I don't want this beautiful ice cream to melt, but I want everybody to see. Um, Steve Butts is here. He is from Taharka. He is their CEO. He is a listener to WNST and Baltimore Positive. He reached me because I started eating his ice cream a couple weeks ago because I love ice cream. We'll get to Jenny's and other brands that I actually eat, but I want to know how to get this to my door. And I want to sample all the flavors. I feel like I so somehow the salted caramel's missing here. I, that, that's sort of the flavor I think of. But I'm going to have the strawberry. Oh, that's creamy. That's roasted. <laughs> I ate too much. And I can't talk. All right, you got to tell me a sad story now. <laughs> that's really no. good. Well, that's creamy. Yeah. I want to get more, <laughs> but I'm going to have more in my mouth. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So first of all, if you're making any of the, the listeners hungry and they want to order the ice cream, it is available online, www.taharkabrothers.com. Um, and, uh, you know, we do home delivery. It's free in the Baltimore um, metro area, the concentrated area. There's sometimes a $5 delivery fee for closer regions and a $10 delivery fee if you're all the way out um you know i love how it says made in baltimore on it you see that part it says it right on the top on the top of the waffle i like that yeah it's it's a baltimore company we're very proud of our origins and we're very proud to be making the ice cream right here on clipper mill road right right next to to 83 
um, the Jones Falls Expressway. So, uh, real quick, Taharka McCoy was uh, was a, uh, a, a person that um, Sean actually mentored. Uh, he was one of the, the first participants in the Sylvan Beach Foundation uh, program back in the 90s. Wow. And uh, he was uh, 14 years old. Um, Sean was a mentor. Uh, you'll have to, at some point, uh, have Sean on and, and get the, the story direct from him. Uh, but you know, Do I get to eat more ice cream while I do that? That's exactly right. You know, we'll all my guests are trying cream. to shut me up. The best way to shut me up is like, hand me some honey graham ice cream and, and let me get after it. So, yeah, perfect. <laughs> So to, to, to Harkin McCoy, um, you know, grew, grew up, ha- had his own kid, uh, actually got to a position where he was the same age Sean was when he was mentoring, uh, when he was being mentored, and uh, started mentoring some youth in his neighborhood. Uh, this was back in, in the early 2000s. Uh, to Harkin was tragically shot um, and killed, um, and, um, and he, 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 uh, he became an inspiration for Sean um, in, in terms of a, a a guy trying to do something right for his neighbors, his community. And, um, and so, you know, about five years after that, uh, as Sean went through a rebranding um, and uh, concentration, pivoting a little bit away from the Sylvan Beach uh, Foundation, wanted to do something that was more um, uh, specific to a product and, and had gotten a lot of raves about the ice cream. Um, he uh, went in that direction, and they rebranded around Taharka, his name, and, and everyone, the idea, everyone being a Taharka brother um, and, and, and being inspired by him. And one of the cool, one of the cool. I'm glad you told me that story because I, I literally, I, I did not know that story. Yeah, I thought that the, the Harker the brothers cool were two dudes, and I, I, you know, I didn't know, you know. <laughs> I wear no, Robert a, Graham a, shirts, a and, now, no. and Robert uh, Graham's not a person. It was a Robert and a Graham, you know, so you just never know. Speaking of Graham crackers, so. That's right. Which I'm eating right, right now. So one of the cool, coolest parts of the job is is I actually work next to Tarka's son. Uh, his name's Dietrich McCoy, and he runs. Uh, he's our home delivery dispatcher uh, right now. He he's had a his job's been upended. Uh, he he had been our account in accounting in accounting, and uh, you know it's great to work with him. And 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 again, these guys. Uh, that I work with, they keep the Taharka spirit alive. Well, uh, where is Taharka? Like, where do you make this delicious ice cream? Right in Hamden, <laughs> right, right, right off Clipper Mill, right on Clipper Mill Road, right next to to eighty three. Oh man, who picks the flavors? Uh, that is a team effort. That's a team effort. Well, that's um, the most important. And, and, like, okay, so a couple years ago. I love ice cream, been eating ice cream forever. I like really good ice cream. I'm not really like Cold Stone and different stuff like that, putting stuff in ice cream. It's okay, you know, and I like Mr. Softy when I was a kid and the yogurt tree and I like banana splits and I like pineapple topping and I love butterscotch. I'm a huge butterscotch guy. Probably why I like salted caramel so much. So um, I-, I discovered Jenny's on a Ravens road trip like three years ago. We're at we're in Nashville in this big pavilion where they have this great Jamaican food that Guy Fieri went to and we eat our faces off when we're in Nashville. Most people drink when they're there. We eat. So we found this Jenny's and I didn't even know it was like a chain. Like I was in there at ten thirty in the morning. I'd had this giant breakfast, southern breakfast, and I saw the ice cream and they had like an eggnog ice cream and like these sexy flavors and I'm like, I wanna try it, but I'm not hungry. And I had three little scoops and when I tasted it, I'm like that's different, man. Like, they're putting different kind of cream in there. They're putting different kind of ingredients in there. It's not just a bunch of, like, M&Ms thrown together into vanilla ice cream and called, like, some candy name. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, there's really some thought. And I, Andrew Zimmern's a friend of mine, right? He comes on the show every year at Super Bowl. And we really talked at length about ice cream this year and, and how much I love ice cream, how it's sort of my guilty little thing being a skinny 52-year-old guy that does a lot of yoga that I don't eat like a whole pint of ice cream and I'd have two little cones, you know, like two little scoops on a cone. But I was talking to Zimmern about it and talk and, and watching shows on TV where like, you know, this has become, in the way maybe coffee 20 years ago became something everybody was doing, and uh, yeah, I know they serve cotton candy at LA restaurants for dessert now, but ice cream is something that, my, my uncle Claude and I in 1976 
made an urn of peach ice cream in Ware <laughs> Shoals, South Carolina. He had the crank on it, right? And the salt, right. the whole deal. So ice cream is something that's sort of ubiquitous to America. Everybody's had it. Everybody has had vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and whatever on a hot day. But the, ma- the amount of flavors and the way it's made and the way it's whipped, there's like an art to it that's different than just what my dad had back in the 70s at Pantry Pride, you know? There's yeah. an art form to what you guys do that I Absolutely. can't do in my kitchen, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so we – and, you know, at some point you got to try our non-dairy flavor. So we, we – Why do, would I do that? Well, there's – we it's – this coconut milk is incredible. Mm. Uh, the taste is there. The non-dairy chocolate love is, 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 is good. But we've actually – about a week, oh man, I'm sorry, maybe three weeks ago, we started selling um, golden milk, and it's based on some Indian recipe. Again, Sean will have to. That turmeric in it. It does. It has some yeah. turmeric in it. My, it then my wife will love it. My wife loves turmeric. It's good for her. Very me. different, uh, very, you know, like a relaxing, kind of chill. Uh, thing to have before going to bed uh, in the evening. It's 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 just incredible. So the golden milk is uh, is one of our our new hits. Well, once we legalize uh, cannabis here, you can go back to the wake and bake and figure out whatever you want to do THC there, and we'll That's figure right. all that out as well. Here's the CEO <laughs> of Taharka Brothers Ice Cream. How many flavors um, at any given time are you guys running out of there? And and it's like this too with with other ice creams and certainly with other beer, right? Like like I think about beer. If I want to get a stout, I better hurry and get it because, like, you know, they will take it away on summer days and they will bring something, some IPA I don't want with fruit in it. Um, so I love stouts year-round. Uh, I, I sort of – I love eggnog year-round. So you're one of those people like everyone else. It pisses me off. They take eggnog away. Every year they take it away in January. <laughs> and if you want it, you have to hoard it. You want eggnog in May? You better have bought it in December, right? So you, you have all these flavors. What, what happens here? Like when I think of spring and summer – I think of going to the farmer's market. I think of not wearing a mask and not wearing gloves as well. But I, I go to the farmer's market uh, down there, and I get the, the most beautiful peaches, you know, just incredible. As I was eating strawberry, I'm, eat, I'm eating the, uh, the honey graham right now. But tell me you're going to work up some sort of peach cobbler thing this summer, please. Yeah, uh, so, Nestor, we do, we, do a, we do a seasonal. We do seasonal flavors. Uh, we just, in the spring, had half-baked ginger, Hmm. And uh, banana cream pie. Oh, 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 oh! Is are you still have that, or is that gone? No, nah, that's gone. And I tell you that the, I thought we were friends. I thought you listened <laughs> to the program. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, the the truth of the matter is, we have been just like everyone else. We have been pretty significantly impacted by the pandemic. Uh, um, you know, the the fact of the matter is, we have um, have had to move away from those seasonal flavors because it is everything that we can do right now. To keep keep the basics um, our going, product right. and you know keep keep it on on retailer shelves and keep up with the home delivery. So we are just uh, right now making the the fifteen flavors that we offer, uh, you know, that are available online through the home delivery system. Um, we are just producing those at this time, but we really hope to get back to um, you know our seasonal flavors, uh, including we have something called a beautiful struggle, which is a uh, strawberry sauce and blueberry sauce. Uh, ice cream, buttermilk ice cream. That sounds perfect uh, to me. That that's up my alley. That that's me. Say that again. What's it called? A beautiful struggle. I'm googling that right struggle. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, now, who names these? Uh, again, a team effort, Nestor. The 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 uh, the team here at Taharka. Um, they they come up with the the ingredients, the the design, the flavor, and then uh, and then the name. And it's not CEO driven. I can tell you that. <laughs> Honey graham ice cream and graham cracker swirl, and I just killed it. My wife's going to be pissed. She doesn't like strawberry either, but I'm going to have to go get some more of this. But you can find him at Taharka. Uh, Steve Butts is here. He sails around the world. Give me the sa- – let's go back to New Zealand and Tahiti and your kids and your family. Like, so you have a boat. You've been in Ocean City. I got to get your full story here, and we'll get back. And I mean, it, I, I, I'm out of ice cream, so there's nothing left to melt. I'll probably – Lick, I probably licked the top of it. I can probably do that. Um, so you're over in New Zealand like a year ago, and you're friends with the Taharka guys, and now you've gotten involved. So give me the journey from like boat guy to CEO, WNST Baltimore positive listener guy who's going to bring me good ice cream from now on. 
Uh, okay, so um, so I will, about this time last year I was just wrapping up the circumnavigation. The, actually, the last leg I did was uh, Cape Town, uh, Cape Town to Barbados. So that was uh, that was in. Never February. been to Cape Town. I hear it's beautiful. Cape Town is incredible. It's on my uh, wife's you, bucket list. You would you know? love it. You would love Cape Town. That it's it is one of the the more multicultural uh, meccas in on the planet. Um, one of my favorite cities. Um, anyway, it was a, a 29 day sail, uh, to Barbados to kind of wrap up the circumnavigation a couple weeks to get back up. And then you make that sound easy. Like you just get in a boat and you go, um, I got to think the water's a little different around the Cape than that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the Cape was tough. Uh, the Cape was tough. Um, the South Atlantic ocean, I had been studying the oceans for, for a while before taking on this. Well, Argentina uh, is a bitch, right? Like you sailing around Cape Horn, it's crazy, right? Yeah, that's tough. I did not have to. Cr- I did not have to go around the Horn. Um, I had to simply go across, you know, traverse the South Atlantic. And and frankly, from Cape Town to to North America, you've got f- fair winds and following seas almost all the time. Um, it was nothing like uh, some of the more harrowing, you know, the the the. Uh, Say that again. It sounds like a real sales. Fair winds and what was that? Following sea. And following sea. Okay, fair enough. All right, I, I, I'm, I got my Google map out. This is the best part because when I was a kid in first grade in Miss Janda's class, I, I had a you know the big globe and I would spin it. And then you could get a book and then you could get a Ram McNally. But like Google Maps is the greatest, isn't it? You know, I especially love when you land in Australia and the Australian guy starts talking to you and, and you know tells you to stay to the left, stay to the left, kind of like Beyonce. So that's right. Yeah, that's right. So anyway, I you know I I, I have a, a, a business. I'm I'm get, trying to get started down in Ocean City. Uh, it's a it's a water taxi. It's called the OC Bay Hopper. It's a water taxi business uh, down there. Um, I jumped into into running that, and um, and when I got back uh, to ba- to Baltimore um, after you know if my kids go to school here, I can't stay down in Ocean City the entire year. Um, when I love love the city, live here, and uh, when we came back up. Um, I kind of looked around and said, you know, I, I want to make this uh, Ocean City business go, but I've got to figure something to dig in, um, you know, during the school year. And I uh, just gave a call to uh, to Sean and um, and said, you know, hey, I'm available. I had experience running a company. Um, do you need this kind of help? And it was a good fit. And I happened to, you know, as these things were coming together, um, back in the Baltimore area, turning Turning back into tuning back into to the Ravens and and the Orioles, uh, you know, and um, here I am. You mean it's a good thing you p- could have got me on your boat out in the South Pacific, but uh, uh, right. I appreciate you you getting back. You know, the, the, we talk about the struggle of Baltimore, and I mean, come on, man, you're a guy with a boat down Ocean City. You're you're sailing around the world. You decide to come back to Baltimore uh, to home and run an ice cream company. Um, Baltimore, man, like, there's something about it that calls to us, right? Like, uh, on a day, quite frankly, when I'm going to be talking to all the mayor candidates uh, during this week, and you can find all that out at Baltimore Positive, that we're trying to fix this this COVID thing, the shutdown, the Orioles season getting shut down, everything getting shut down, Larry Hogan being a real leader in this, in what we're doing here. Uh, you know, I don't think it's bright opening up the boardwalk this weekend down in Ocean City, but that's another fight we can have. Um, I want to keep everyone safe, and I understand there's a balance between commerce and safety for all of us, but Baltimore has always risen above all of this, and I know we've had tough times around here, but I feel like in my travels over the last year and a half of doing Baltimore Positive, all I am finding are awesome people doing awesome things, whether it's awesome ice cream or awesome conversations or, you know, awesome things in universities or awesome things in the community. And I know you've done some great community work as well. But there's something about Baltimore that even when you're on a boat, even when you're in Morea and you're seeing dolphins and rainbows every day and eating pus on crew and seeing Bora Bora and the most beautiful beaches in the world, blue water, you're like, you know, got to get back to Baltimore, you know, gotta get, yeah. I got to get home, you know, and I've been all over the world, but I wind up coming back here and it's, and, and, and I do, and you do, and a lot of people we know do. Nestor, love the city, um, have lived here. Uh, different iterations of my life down in Canton. My wife and I did the the Canton thing in our twenties, and uh, now now live up up in the northern part of the city. 
um, just have missed Baltimore the entire time, even as I, I sailed around the world. Um, and, and frankly, um, really believe in the city. And I do believe in what you're doing. I believe in the city. I believe we have a, a bright future. And, uh, you know, we're, we're dragged down by a, by a couple of small things uh, that just drag the city down. And, and one of them is leadership. And, and, and hopefully we're, we're going to see some kind of a big change here. Um, I know you're doing a lot to, to promote the different candidates and uh, very excited to see how that shakes out. For me, it's but, not uh, even promoting anything. It, you know what I'm promoting? I'm promoting my town, you know. So let me give you my story. My story is that uh, – Two years ago, Don Moeller was running the county. My wife had survived at Hopkins. The city, most of us had survived Freddie Gray. And then the knee happened in London. And obviously, this divisive human being running our, our country right now uh, on a nightly basis got me rolling my sleeves up and saying, all right, I've been silent about this stuff and loud about things like Peter Angelos, and I was always right about the Orioles. I, I still feel very strongly that I was right, uh, and I feel like it was wrong that I've been banned for 14 years uh, from doing what I love doing, covering baseball and talking about baseball. But, you know, two years ago, I, I said, what is the future of our city? What's the future of the Orioles? What's the future of the Ravens when the stadium's half empty as it was for two seasons before Lamar Jackson came along and you know, and really injected this this new infusion of football energy into the city that that all of us saw and all of us have seen uh, and we recognize it from Ray Lewis or Johnny Unitas for, 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 or Burt Jones for that matter, right? <laughs> but yep. the, the last two years seeing the leadership and seeing what my wife and I see living in the city and, and putting the news on every day and feeling like it's an us against them where Hogan's killing the red line dumb uh, you, you know, Trump downing uh, Elijah Cummings and, and our city, dumb. None of that helps our city. So no. I, I have come to the grand conclusion. I've looked around and I've figured out, oh, yeah, it's going to have to be us that fixes it. And maybe we'll get some help from Johnny O in the county and the county people and Freeman Rabaski and other people like that. Maybe we'll get help in Owings Mills. Maybe we'll get help in White Marsh. Um, but a lot of my friends in White Marsh and Hartford County with the red hats on and, and the Trump, I'm, I'm never going to the city. I hate the city. I hate Baltimore. But you love the Ravens. But I'm never going back. And I'm like, all right, I, I've, I've heard enough of that. We're going to have yep. to fix this. So yep, two absolutely. years ago, Don's running the county. Don sits with me at the Ravens games. And I've told this story a few times, but I, I just said, what can I do with 168 hours a week of airtime? I can still talk about sports while I talk about making the city better. Now, I didn't realize that Catherine Pugh was a criminal at that time. I just realized she was incompetent. So that was a year and a half ago. And as we began doing Baltimore Positive, the first day that we did Baltimore Positive, we were at Pizza John's in Essex. Dutch Rupert's Burger was our first guest because he loves pizza. And we were sitting down to do the first piece. And as we looked up on the television, that was the day that the Fed showed up at Catherine Pugh's house. And I turned to Dutch and I said, and I don't know Dutch well, and I said, this is exactly why I'm starting this Baltimore Positive thing because I don't, I don't know where this is going, but it's nowhere good, you know? And we're going to have to be the ones that fixes it. The taxpayers, the, the people who are vested here, the people who are invested here. And the other part of this was two years ago, I took my condo which we love. I live downtown. Everybody has seen my sunrise and sunrise pictures, which would look even better with a Taharka, uh, uh, a honey graham uh, uh, lid. But um, I, I, I thought, like, my wife would like to sit outside and have a cup of Royal Farms coffee and a coal roofing mug with some Taharka uh, wake and bake and sit outside and do that. We don't have a ledge. We don't have a, uh, you know, a porch. We don't we don't have anywhere we can go outside here. And after 15 years of living downtown, we're like, okay, we, we're going to move to Locust Point. We're going to move somewhere else downtown. And I put my condo on the market, and no one came to my condo. My condo was on the market for a year and a half, and I can't honestly say we ever had a legitimate human being walk through it. And I bought a condo that is so stunningly beautiful in the most beautiful part of the city, um, two blocks from Camden Yards, across the street from Inner Harbor, literally where I can walk and get to Hark in 10 different places from here, right? Um, right. As well as Royal Farms and a whole bunch of other things. Bruce Chris, wonderful things, Amici's. We walk everywhere. One of the reasons I'm skinny, you can still eat your ice cream, is we walk because we live in the city, you know? We love the city. 
And I don't want to leave the city. I own a business in the city. I have a condo I can't sell now. I can't give my condo away. So when you can't give your home away and you have the most beautiful home in the city, it's time to like get a shovel and start to figure out how to fix it. So that's my story about Baltimore Positive over the last year and a half. And I've taken my home off the market because no one's going to buy it anyway. And I've decided to roll my sleeves up and get very, very involved in who the next leader is going to be and how they're going to lead and how... And you've traveled the world, right? So I I was on planes with the Ravens two years ago, uh, Steve, going to Nashville, Charlotte, Cleveland. I remember going on a run where every place I went was a place I had been and been going for 20 or 30 years. And all of the places I looked around and I said, it's cleaner than it's ever been. It's nicer than it's ever been. Um, I'm not seeing bums and panhandling and broken windows and graffiti and businesses look open and it feels vibrant and people are down here and there's a new restaurant over here and there's new commerce over there and look at the buses they're clean and I, I I've seen that in Cleveland in Nashville in Indianapolis unfortunately I've been to some places like San Diego that look like they're falling apart but you know and they lost their football team from poor leadership so um I want to make sure that that doesn't happen to the baseball team here and that we're not visiting the Orioles in Nashville and for me and I, I know you listen to me rant from time to time about all of this I just think we haven't thought enough about who's going to fix it. Because Larry Hogan's not coming to fix it. Donald Trump's not coming to fix it. Pennsylvania, Delaware, West Virginia, Virginia, they're not coming to fix it. We have to fix it. So that's... That's the message, and I am finding lots and lots of awesome people like yourself who had a sailboat and could be hanging out in Ocean City and white marling and doing all that stuff, and instead you're here selling ice cream trying to make our city better and employing people, right? (laughs) That's right. That's right. And, Nestor, I mean, one thing you're you're dead on about, and that is the the talent in this city, the the, the people you find uh, as you begin to talk to people, and, and there is a sense amongst that 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 core of talent that that we can make this better. I appreciate you digging, you know, digging in, rolling up your sleeves, um, as you said. I mean, just an example uh, again of the city's generosity. We, you know, we we started a home delivery system at Taharka, and uh, I, I put a single line up there. I said, "Look, I know there's kids that are not um, getting their meals at school. Um, if you want to donate eight bucks along with your purchase." You know, we'll make sure they get a mini pint of ice cream. Um, quite, quite frankly, seven thousand uh, dollars later, uh, donated uh, dollars later, uh, people have just responded. They, this is a, a generous city. It has a great spirit, and um, I'm trying to keep up with the. Uh, the donations as, as much as I'm trying to keep up with the, the production of the ice cream. Dude, I just look down. <clears throat> you make a matcha green tea ice cream. That's right. I gotta have that. That, that, that. I discovered green, rediscovered. Well, everybody's had green tea ice cream because everybody's been to a Chinese joint 20 years ago where you're, they're like, you want the ice cream that comes with the lunch? Sure, man. And they bring you a little scoop of green ice cream and you're like, what is that? And I, I could never figure out what it was when I was a kid because the only place I ever had it, right? It was like at the White Rice Inn up on Park Avenue with my mom. Um, and and I, I went in and I, I found green tea ice cream and I was shocked you know, it was a haagen or whatever, and I bought it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. And I want to give you a shout-out because I did not buy your vanilla ice cream at Eddie's. I bought the roasted strawberry to honor my father. Um, and then I went to Streets, and I bought the uh, Wake and Bake, and I bought the pistachio. It was the last pistachio they had. I bought it for my wife because my wife... I'm not going to touch that pistachio. That's going to she's going to eat the whole thing, especially once she tastes it. But um, for, for me, with the, you know getting these ice creams and trying things, I got vanilla ice cream. I got a regular vanilla bean ice cream. Uh, I do business with Royal Farms, so Royal Farms. You know, I, I go in and they have the or so I, I got to I got to get to hark into Royal Farms. I'll hook you up with Frank. But um, there you go. that's what I need to do. But friends putting friends Baltimore putting Baltimore together. But um, I got some ice cream, and I, of all the flavors, man, there's every Ben and Jerry staring at me, every, you know, all, all the flavors staring at me. I got vanilla bean. You, you know what I mean? And, like, yeah. if you feel a little unclean when you do that, you know, it, it feels like, well, why would I do that? Why would I get vanilla? And I got vanilla bean ice cream. It's so good. Like, yeah. I, I, and I don't. It just sounds like, oh, it's vanilla ice cream, but you forget. It's like green tea ice cream. Like, who would try it? Get it. 
you, you know, give, give, move it around in your mouth and let it melt a little bit, right? And, and, <laughs> That's right. And, and you'll see. Now, the arse tells me about key lime, okay? Now, I was at the store the other day, and I saw a whole bag of little key limes. And when I, when I see a key lime, my, my, I pucker up. It's like bitter beer face. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't like key lime pie. I don't like my, – my wife loves it. I, I, I don't like – Tart, you know, I'm I'm, I'm sweet. You you know that about me. Uh, I'm not tart. And so key lime, but but Arsh keeps telling me you got to get the key lime. You got so I one day he and I are going to get together over Cross Street at the mall, and I'm going to get a mouthful of it because I don't want a whole pint of key lime because I'm not sure I'm going to like it to be honest with you. <laughs> you got to give it a, give it a whirl. Give it a whirl. You it may, that may surprise you. Do you guys still sample and do all that stuff at the? At, at, I know we don't have any of the charity events, but I've been to. So many events as a, like an eater, <laughs> as yep. a celebrity judge, and lots of times I that's where I got your honey gram. I mean I'm I, I eat it three or four times a year whenever I'm in the room. And Taharka has the little booth set up, and I'm like, I'm gonna go over there and scam me some honey gram at the end of this, uh, and I always do. But now that I know that I can like have it in my freezer, do you know how excited I am about this? Yeah, yeah, and we and we do sample it. I mean. I'm, I'm, to, we're not sure how the pandemic is going to affect that that avenue when it comes. It's to, crazy, you know, we, right? We, Buffets we a, yeah, too, right? Yeah, we have a we have a couple of scoop shops. Uh, one down at the the new Broadway Market, uh, and the other at this incredible facility, Our House, which is which is here in Hamden. We love and, Our uh, House. Do you know why we love Our House? I'm, I'm Venezuelan. They have arepas there, so <laughs> that's they, right. They, it's legit. We love Our House. Very good, good, very good spot. Great spot to get ice cream. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. You know, I, we've been thinking a lot about how the how 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 to how to handle the people that have different requests and want to sample the ice cream. I'm not sure how we're, how that's going to play out in the pandemic. But you can be sure this summer, uh, if if the conditions are right and and the and people say it's safe and the governors we're ready to do business, we're going to have the Taharka ice cream truck, the big giant Taharka ice cream truck out there at different community events first Thursdays. Does it have a bell? Does it ring? Does it ring? Uh, you know, it, it doesn't, but we're actually... You got to uh, do... It has guys, to have a ring-a-ding in it, man, to be well, a real ice cream of, truck. Some of the guys are working on a, on, a, on, on some beats for the ice cream truck. They think it needs a little... The, the whole ice cream song needs a little bit of an urban update. So uh, Let's go. I, I'm in. Uh, bring it down here. I'll, I'll, I'll yell. <laughs> That's right. Stay tuned for that. All right. Uh, Steve Butts is here. He is from Taharka. He uh, is the CEO uh, Chief Ice Cream Officer. Awaken more than just your taste buds. Taharka is proudly made in Baltimore with the uh, waffle top there. Look, man, I've been all over the world. I've eaten a lot of ice cream, um, and you reached to me last week about me talking up your ice cream. I, that will not be a problem. I will just say this. I'm going to have to leave at least one pint of competitor ice cream in my thing because I just can't get by the, the brown butter brittle stuff. I mean, we, 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 we're going to work on, on some flavors with you guys and talk. I want to have your flavor people on, and I just want to fight about what you should or shouldn't put in ice cream. And I don't Look. know what the rules are anymore i mean because you can put anything in anything anymore right like there's there there are no rules right that's right that's right and 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 you ought to you ought to go at it with the flavor people there's if there's one thing universal that that i've learned in in running this company number one everyone loves honey graham and number two (laughs) everyone's everyone's got an idea about the next great flavor what is the next great flavor? Do you what, what would what do you want as the CEO? If you're running, no, you are running the place. Hold on. Um, if you are running the place and you got to pick one flavor, that's not like you're already making, like a flavor that you would you think all the time we should try that, or is there something you haven't tried for crying out loud? You make green tea already. You know, I Lester, you you said something earlier, butterscotch. That that was a, a childhood favorite as well. So you know, butterscotch is something I think we ought to we ought to relook at. Um, Jenny's <laughs> um, makes uh, a gooey butter cake, uh, uh, and apparently butter cake is a big thing in like Illinois. And there's something about it, you, you know. There, there's something about it being a regional thing. So, like, I guess that would be sort of like what's a Smith Island cake would be here, or you know, things that are you know, Fisher's popcorn. Throw that in there, or you know, I don't know something that would be local like that. But butterscotch is timeless. 
when, when the Mr. Softy truck came, they always had butterscotch. I always wound up with butterscotch. So um, yeah, we I, had, we we actually had we had an Old Bay caramel that's uh, down down at uh, the Chop Tank, Al, Al Smith's uh, restaurant down there. We had an Old, old, old Bay, Bay caramel, caramel that they that they uh, that they were selling. Yep, absolutely. So so that. sort of caramel with a little bit of. All right, all right, all right. Well, look, we've talked a lot. Um, I'm out of ice cream, so I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody how they can order and uh, and find you guys online. And literally, you you bring it right to the door. This isn't like an Amazon thing or, or like a door drop thing, right? No, we bring it to people. I mean, that's one thing that's a little different about our ice cream delivery is you know you you got to be home to receive it. So uh, the pandemic has helped us in a couple ways. People are home. Uh, no one's on the streets, so we're dry. getting getting ice cream to them is, is fairly easy. What is a flash sale, by the way? What happens when the flash sale happens? I'm, I'm reading uh, this. So, so we don't serve every, you know, re- regularly people can't in the Baltimore metro area. They can always get the product. If you're in the surrounding surrounding uh, geography, you can generally get the product. But places like uh, Anne Arundel County, um, further Columbia, Harford County, uh, we we knew we had fans out there. We weren't sure how to how to do it in a productive way. Is this like eggnog in July, them? where you can't get it? Is it sort of like that? Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. So we came up with this concept of a flash sale. We pick a couple zip codes and we we turn them on for that day. Actually, you know, we've got a an Anne Arundel County flash sale going on right now. Uh, we had Columbia last week. We got seventy orders. Uh, just from that particular wow. geography, and it makes it much easier for our delivery guys to get out there and serve one community. I had a chance to pick up Caramel Crunch, and I didn't. Salty caramel ice cream with chocolate-covered honeycomb toffee. I picked up the pistachio for my wife because I found it behind the wake and bake. Uh, a chocolate love was available at Eddie's. They did have that. I did not grab that. Uh, ch- coffee Oreo, key lime pie. Controversial flavor. That's all I'm telling you. It's con- there's a lot of controversy around that. That's all. And, and, and you know, watch. You're going to send a pint over, and I'm going to eat it, and I might like it. But I, at least for now, I'm going to pretend I don't because I've never met a key lime that I I got along with. So I'll tell you, Nestor. The other thing I'm going to do is I've got a bunch of uh, eggnog, frankly, in the freezer. What? If you're, if you're, and if you're game, honey, like he's got that, eggnog. I, I'd like to get that off my hands. Well, I listen. I love you, and, and like you, you, you <laughs> called me over the weekend, and you offered to send me ice cream, like, uh, and I said no because I didn't have any room in the freezer. And my wife said, "We gotta eat all that ice cream we got before we make any more room for any more ice cream around here. You gotta eat that strawberry in the back that you picked up at Royal Farms that you don't even like because it's too light and it's whipped. Now I can replace it with the roasted strawberry from Taharka. So I, I, I've updated some of my flavors, but I'm telling you, man, if." Your scoop shop's got nothing on my freezer, dog. I mean, I'm telling you, I always have 12 of these in my. We have a whole rack, and what happens is the the ice maker sort of bangs the 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 12th one in the front, so it has to be sort of like you ha- have no ice cream in it, so it moves a little bit. Um, this was empty, so I have. I have room for one more. I just emptied out Honey Graham. So, um, yeah, we're going to make some room. But don't send me all the eggnog until I make room, all right? That's right. Man, I there won't. is – you know what? If you bring me eggnog in July, you will be like Santa Claus. You'll be like my new hero. <laughs> it's, I, believe me, I got some for you. <laughs> Steve Butts, he is the CEO of Taharka, made in Baltimore. There's a Wake and Bake segment for you. My thanks to Bill Cole and all of our friends at Cole Roofing, as well as Rofo for the coffee to get me through this. I am Nestor. Nasty at WNST.net reaches me. Sometimes we do sports. Sometimes there's a pandemic and we talk to mayor candidates. We are WNST.net AM 1570. We're keeping calm. We're staying local. We're eating Tarka ice cream. And we're staying Baltimore positive.